Hi, my name is Andy Gillett. I'm a photographer and educator and I've been interested in cine photography for a long time and people keep asking what is the difference between the cameras and what are the gauges and types of film things take and I'm going to have a quick look now at three different types of format um, going back to about 1922 to I'm um, going to end up in about 1940. Right. Mr. Edison in America started using this wonderful um, film developed by Kodak, 35mm film. This was the first type of film which really took off in the cinema and professional um, companies were using this um, from about 1900. Now, photography as we know started in about um, 1839 with Fox Talbot. Um, developed very quickly over 60 years, but movie photography took a lot longer, partly because of the cost of film. Um, and it was just beginning to get going in about the 1900s in a professional manner, but the First World War basically took over any attempt to get it into the amateur market. But after the First World War, in the early 20s, companies like Kodak could see that there was a big market of the amateur, right? The problem was cost. This is 35mm film. You can see it's very wide and it was expensive. Now, a company in France called the Pathé Company, um, which actually goes all the way back to the Lumiere brothers, they had an ingenious idea was that if you divided, if you got rid of these sprockets on the side, you would have enough space for three bits of stripes of film that could be cut from this and you could put your sprocket in between the shots because remember the whole way a movie film is made up is it's individual photographs taken like you can see here um, so be handling this a lot more carefully um, and the sprockets normally in a traditional film went on the side but Pathé thought, why don't we put it in the middle? So Pathé, as a company, started something called the Baby Projector in about 1922. And the idea was to get home um, movies that were being shown in the cinema shrunk down to 9.5 film and you could see them in the home. But it was very quickly that people wanted to take their own um, movie images. And Kodak thought, we won't split it into three because the quality is not too good. Kodak thought, why don't we just split the film into two and have 16 mil. So you've got this gauge of film, 16 mil. Here we have a 16 mil film. And Kodak, their first amateur camera was one very much like this. This is a slightly later model. This is called a Cine B and it dates from about 1926. It's clockwork, wind it up here, um, lens here, viewfinder at the top, and as you can hear, it still very much works. Um, it's a bit stiff to get into the into the oh. Typical when you're demonstrating, but there we are. Very interesting mechanism, in particular because you've got two spools and you've got a spool behind here. So you've got one spool there, film goes through onto another spool behind. So that was in, uh, introduced in the 1920s. This is a similar, this was the Pathé B camera of about 1933, 1934. What Pathé did with their film was they put it in a little cassette like this, a little cartridge. So the film went in there, you bought the cartridge, put it in your camera, went off, did your filming. All these cameras we're looking at today are clockwork and you've got about two minutes of film on there. Just a quick look at projectors. This is a Kodak projector which was sold for this camera here. Um, Kodak Cine 
Um, this one needs a little bit of attention on the difference between 16mm and 8mm, um, 16mm and 9.5 as we said is the sprockets. These sprockets are on the side. Original 16mm had two sets of sprockets, so you've got a sprocket there and a sprocket there. But 9.5, the sprocket is in the middle, and with a 9.5 projector, the spools are slightly different. 9.5 and 16mm, the actual area of the film is almost the same. So Kodak in the 1920s were doing 16mm, Pathé in France were doing 9.5. 9.5 was a lot cheaper than the Kodak film. And it soon became apparent that Pathé cells were outdoing Kodak. And Kodak, a progressive company at the time, saw the amateur market as a key market because the more cameras you sell, the more films you can sell. But what was putting people off was the cost. So the simple thing was, you still got a relatively good image if you had half the area of the 16mm. So they came up with something called 8mm. 8mm you might have heard of before um, because it was a very, very popular gaze right until the 1980s or um, with something called Super 8, which we'll look at later. This is a little Bell and Howell camera of about 1939. Clockwork. Here that motor, and again you grind it over here. But what is ingenious about this is the film. It's 16 mil, but you take it on two sides. So there we are with the film. It goes through the camera once, and, but it only expose half the film. You get to the end of the film, you turn it over, and it then exposes the other side. So, of over 16mm, you put it through the film camera once that way, turn it over, and it's only exposing half of it. So, half one ray, turn it over, half ray the other, goes into the factory, gets cut in half, and then it gets sent back to you on a spool, smaller spool than this, but what a lot of people did was put films together and make long films, okay? Um, last example, the fiddly thing with 8mm was having two spools. So some companies were really ingenious and said, right, we won't have that. We'll come up with a system where we can put it on a Zeiss in Germany could see that this was a fiddle. So they came up with a system where you basically put your 8mm film in a cassette. There you see, 8mm film, put it in the cassette, and then once you've got it in the cassette, it's a lot easier to place in the camera and then turn it over during half the way. Okay? There you go. So that Pre, just pre-war, very nice um, size icon cine camera which took 8mm. So this takes us from about 1922 up to about 1940. And then later we'll talk about what happened next. <laughs>